Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel, Olivia and I, I'm Shona and this is Olivia and this is her 8 month update. Can't believe we're coming round to another one of these, it's just, December just flew in, it was so busy um, with all the sort of festive things we had on, so it's just absolutely flown in, so yeah, 8 months, so the t filming this on the Thursday and she was 8 months yesterday and it'll go up tomorrow. Um, so yeah, she's eight months and getting huge, and getting a big girl. Just as you can see, she likes to growl, and she's happy. She's growling. <laughs> you like to growl. <laughs> um, I haven't had her weighed in since the health visitor was here at the start of January, and she was eighteen five and a half ounces, 18 pounds, five and a half ounces. Um, so obviously a month on from then she'll be more. She was 72 centimetres, so again, she's still on that 75th centile, so she's gonna be a tall girl. Clothes-wise, clothes-wise, she is into, she's just about finished six to nine. Um, I think we're just getting the last, last really few weeks out of it, and we'll probably start into the six to uh, the. We'll start into the nine to twelve soon. She's into the nine to twelve vest because she needs the bigger, the bigger ones. Um, what else? So we'll start with feeding. She's still eating really well. She loves her food and she loves our milk, both things. Um, there's no one that she likes more than the other. Um, she's happy as long as she's fed. <laughs> she takes three meals a day she, and she takes three bottles a day. So she gets three bottles, uh, one in the morning, one mid-afternoon and one before bedtime. So that's feeding. <coughs> Sleeping has been a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> because the way I got her to sleep before was that we, I would kind of lie down with her and that was fine, she, she, was, she would do that no bother. But I would say recently it's maybe to even know I'm lying down with her to get her to sleep and then transferring her to her cot or whatever, she's still taking quite a while to go to sleep and because she's been teething she's been waking up during the night um, usually to have a nappy so she'll need a nappy change which probably wakens her up and then i would lie down with her for 40 odd minutes get her to sleep transfer her cot and five minutes later she'd be awake and it's like no and then so like one night it took twice to do that before she finally settled and then a couple of nights ago, it happened again, 40 minutes, trying to get her to sleep. And she was five minutes, and that was her awake. And I was like, right, we need to do something about this. I'd been thinking about sleep training for a while, purely because her sleeping hadn't been that great. And it obviously took me so long to get her to sleep on the odd occasion. <laughs> Plus, I'm going away back to work in, uh, in five weeks. So I need my sleep. Uh, my job's quite quite demanding, so I need sleep. And also she's going to go to nursery and I obviously can't be there to lie down with her to get her to sleep. So I thought it was better that she self-sleeps, that she self-soothed herself to sleep. So obviously I thought about um, sleep training. I hadn't really given it much thought other than I thought we needed to do it. Um, and I hadn't really learned what all the different methods were. I knew about controlled crying and I, I, I didn't really think I was going to be able to deal with that and I didn't think my husband would be able to deal with that either. So I didn't think about really going down that route but when I decided to do it was at like three in the morning when we couldn't get her to sleep and I thought no we we'll have to do something, we we'll have to change this up because I can't go any longer, you know, we both need our sleep, we're both working, or well, I will be. And she needs a good sleep as well, you know. So, 
we've decided we've decided to sleep train. So I, I don't I don't I don't know what the method is. If I've got a method, it's just what we're doing. So basically, she'll I'll put her down, try and get her drowsy, but it's difficult to get her drowsy because as soon as you put her down, she's like waking up. <laughs> give her a dummy, give her a comforter or a clutie as we call it in Scotland. Um, and then just sort of leave her. We we'll obviously have on the white noise, and I've been trying her um, cot mobile, which seems to sort of help distract her enough because she's quite often, as soon as I put the dummy in and walk out, she'll just pull it out. Um, but if you leave the cot mobile, it's enough for me just to distract her to keep it in. Um, so that first night we did it, it was about an hour and a half. About 40 minutes she was, she was just playing about in her cot. But I didn't go in, I just left her. And then she was almost asleep. And then the crying started. And that was a good 20, 30 minutes. Um, but eventually she did fall asleep in her cot and that was her. So the same again, we did the naps during the day. The next day we did the same with the naps. And it was fine. The day kind of, did that, apart from that first thing in the morning, um, she's kind of got the hang of it. It was really easy. And then yesterday when we did it, it was a little tougher in the naps and then the bedtime she she fought and fought and fought it. So I think it was almost like the first day was maybe, okay, well, this is new, we'll see how it goes. And then the second day it was like, no, I don't like this. <laughs> Give me back my usual routine. So fingers crossed, we're gonna persevere with it. Um, and hopefully it'll, um, within a few days it'll click that that's what she needs to do and no more faffing about her cot that when she goes into it she goes into it to sleep so we'll see how that goes I'm going to do a video on sleep training anyway and how I've done it so I will keep you updated um what else development wise she is now crawling she's been the last few weeks she's kind of been getting a little wee crawl here and there and you can see her kind of building up to it and I would say just today funnily enough um I would say she's cracked it she's still a bit wobbly but she is definitely I would say crawling now so that's her proper crawling as opposed to the army crawling and she's now like pulling herself up so that just sort of came out of the blue where she just started to want to pull herself up and today I've noticed that she's like kneeling more before she wouldn't kneel, she would just be like, she kind of either want to crawl or or sort of like touch things from her front or on her back or maybe think about pulling herself up. But today is the first day that I would say it's like, I can kneel and she's fine to kneel. So, and even standing as well, I'm, I would still hold her and still be very much there. But I would say her standing's getting a lot more confident as well. I can see that I maybe don't have to quite hold her so much. So everything's obviously strengthening in our back and that and our legs. So we'll see what happens in the next few months. But I think we'll have to go and get that stair gate on uh, ASAP before, before she's trying to get up the stairs or down the stairs. Because she goes, now that she's crawling, it's quite fast. <laughs> it's quite crazy how fast it is. Um, I'll insert a clip so you can see her and other than that she's speaking like she, she has said mama and dada but I haven't really heard her recently sort of speaking she's kind of been I don't know if it's just like speaking has not become a priority it's more you know movement mm -hmm. things like that she's very much yeah. into toys she likes playing with them and playing with her toys she really likes that she likes everything she shouldn't, like sky selectors and mobile phones and things that she shouldn't have. But she's she's really coming on. It's it's really good to see her coming on. Um, I'm sure the speaking will come eventually. She she kind of has days where she'll speak loads and then a few weeks where there's nothing. She likes to make lots of noise. Do you? Yes likes to make loads of noise, she sings and, and she blows raspberries. You do it. And she waves and she claps, no bother. Um, she can hold out her arms to sort of be picked up. 
she's really can be quite clingy sometimes um where <clears throat> if me or my husband walk out the room she's almost like oh don't do that you know if you leave her sometimes she can be quite sort of clingy which I believe is normal she has two teeth we've got through two teeth um just before christmas it's just the front two um with an awful dose of uh, crazy nappies with it um, and we've eventually got them through. She has still been teething. There's not much drool. The drool seems to have disappeared, but I can still tell she's teething. She still gets really red cheeks. She can be quite narky and biting everything and her temperature hasn't really spiked, but there's a couple of times when I've just given her it because it's been a bit high. Um, so I'm not sure if we're, I have had a look, but it doesn't look like there's anything coming through at the moment, but no doubt they'll be on their way more. And that's it really, I can, I, that's all I can think about. She's just coming on. Next month she starts nursery um, and I'm back to work. She's got three days in nursery and two days with her grannies. So plenty of interaction and I'm sure she'll, I'm sure she'll really enjoy it. I'm a bag of nerves to go back and leave her, but I'm sure it'll be fine. That's everything for Olivia's eight month update. We will see you again soon. Um, if you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you're new please click subscribe and if you want if you click the bell you'll get um, a notification when I upload at the moment I'm uploading on a Tuesday and on a Friday and that's everything well we'll see you later say bye